Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So Nvidia finally released more GPUs and it's giving us a lot of insight into why maybe we didn't see a 4090 Ti, where Nvidia wants to go with their highest priced, highest end GPUs and what they've produced for us peasants who can't simply shell out $6,000 for a uh, GPU that can do some AI. So let's get into it. So my best guess at this point as to why Nvidia canceled the 4090 Ti generally is why sell high grade AD102 chips as 4090 Ti's for $2,000 a piece when you can cram four of them into workstation RTX cards retailing for nearly $7,000 a piece and just make more money and say it's all for AI, which I can't really blame them. But they've decided to release three more cards on the workstation front those would be um, filling in behind the RTX 6000. These are the RTX 5000, 4500, and 4000. Uh, there's also a small form factor version of the RTX 4000 now that's in the same packaging size as the prior A2000. So you might be thinking, you know, I thought Nvidia announced the GH200 at Computex. Like, why are we seeing this as a, an announcement again? And you'd be right, because NVIDIA did announce the first iteration of the GH200 GPU, uh, the next predecessor to the H100, and it was really impressive there, right? Tons of RAM, I think like 282 gigs of HPM3 on package, which was kind of crazy, an eye-watering number of Tensor and CUDA cores. However, there are some caveats here. So a big theme of NVIDIA at SIGGRAPH this year was fitting more AI stuff into expensive GPUs. They've realized that they have a bit of a lead, they've realized their GPUs are expensive, and they're getting in here to make the business case for the guys who are gonna drop huge money on GPUs, all the VC guys. And basically they've made the claim that we've done a ton of work in software and in hardware, so you can just cram more of it on the GPU. And their software tooling really speaks to this. They've released a number of graphics and generative AI and LLM improvements that make it possible to do wild things. So for instance, they have an implementation of Stable Diffusion that can sit uh, on its own within a 66 megabyte text file, which is kind of crazy. They've created models that now can actually create the same generative video and generative graphical features for Hollywood that can represent um, these particle effects with up to an order of magnitude less memory. So going from something that would take two gigs to represent to only a few hundred megabytes, which is wild. This all starts with the new iteration of the GH200. So they've understood that, you know, OpenAI cannot get their hands on enough of these. We don't really know how GPT-5 is going to be structured yet, but we can bet that it's going to have to do with a lot of expensive hardware from NVIDIA. So they figured we might as well make this an even better use case since whatever AMD has come up with has been kind of hilarious. So what are these improvements? So first off, they've upgraded the memory entirely. So, and doing this on something that's on die is pretty insane because it pretty much means that an entirely new lithography was produced for this in just two and a half months, or was perfected in just two and a half months. So they've upgraded from HBM3 to HBM3E memory, which is the newest cutting edge memory available. They've also just about doubled the memory, which in the dual configuration delivers up to three and a half times more capacity and three times more bandwidth. And they expect this platform to be fully available, in the DGX platform specifically, in the second quarter of 2024. Now let's get on to sort of the consumer GPUs. So the stuff for us peasants, right? So the specs are pretty straightforward. They're, you're getting the full Ada Lovelace capability, the same that you would see in the RTX 6000, just pared down a little bit by TDP. So going from the RTX 6000 down through the rest, we're starting with a 300 watt TDP. The rest, um, the RTX 5000 is at 250 watts. The 4500 is basically a slightly neutered RTX 5000 with 210 watt TDP and even less memory. And the RTX 4000 at the back of the pack actually has a respectable 20 gigs of memory. And then the SFF TDP is 70 watts. The normal TDP is 130. The center sort of creme de la creme of this lineup is by far the RTX 5000. It has 32 gigs of memory, so it's solidly better uh, than the 4090 in theory. It'll be really interesting to see inference benchmarks once this comes out. The big key here is the RAM. You not only have more RAM, but this is ECC RAM, which you wouldn't think is a huge deal but especially once you're using um, NVLink, it's a nice thing to have. And of course, it's important to note that the 4090 also, unlike the 3090, does not have any NVLink capability. And the RTX 6000 comes in at an eye-watering $7,000. The RTX 5000, the, the price has been bumped quite a bit. So speculatively, we're pretty sure this is going to cost around 4,000 US dollars, which is kind of nuts because I bought a bunch of A5000s back at the peak of the GPU mining boom when Ethereum mining is still going strong. And I think they were only like 2750 from central computers. It, it wasn't that bad. 
Um, at the time, that was actually about what you would pay for a brand new 3090 that had been scalped on eBay. So these all still generally, you know, look like, uh, like a cassette, which is fine because if you're shoving them in an AI computer, you're not really looking at them and you don't really care if they're, you know, a, the coolest looking thing. But the, the biggest take from this, and I initially noticed this on the L40 and the L40S, and I had to do a double take because there are a lot of um, companies that did, that managed the press release and they used images of the wrong cards. And of course, it's a, it's, it's a very honest mistake because NVIDIA is bad at naming things. And of course, for the latest generation, they had to pick a naming scheme that is identical to two generations ago. So there's no longer like a nasty green stripe on these, but they generally look the same. However, there is a very important difference, which is this little melty connector right here that has just been a major problem for anyone who's owned a 4090 and leaves it on when they're not home and really hopes it doesn't burn down their house. And now data center operators will have to hope this doesn't burn down their data center. We were really hoping that maybe there would be a new version of this connector on the 5090. And at this point, I really don't think it's gonna happen unless these all start melting in data centers. So yeah, unfortunately, uh, these are all using the new 12 HVPWR connector that has been the bane of anyone who bought a 4090. Uh, I think the uh, the new RTX 4000 looks pretty slick. It's a single slot card, definitely beefier than the RTX A4000. Uh, and of course, they all still look like cassette tapes, but there's not much we can do about that. Uh, so the L40S also uses this connector. Uh, there's a really solid write-up on Serve the Home. You should definitely check out. It's linked below. And you can see here, uh, there's that uh, that fine connector again. And I want to finish with this card because I think it's very interesting. And it's interesting because it's not as good as the RTX 6000. And they also released one of these, uh, the L40, uh, back at Computex. And what's curious here is it has a very respectable 350 watt um, TDP. There's no NVLink. It only has 48 gigs of RAM. And it's paring down what you would even see on the RTX 5000. Curiously, um, I think this is really a successor to the A40 in a lot of ways, which in my opinion is the most likely GPU you're to be given if you're on Google Colab or Hugging Face. So it is a commodity GPU that is good enough at most things that's aimed at um, cloud interfaces for doing AI. And another big software focus of NVIDIA at SIGGRAPH this year was the notion of the AI cloud workstation, or the you know if you were doing something very simple that's only focused on training, you'd use one set of GPUs, and then if you needed a ton of power on demand, then Nvidia would provision that for you. Uh, what's wild is there is such demand for compute right now that I think will only continue to increase in in vigor. That uh, there are companies that have considered buying entire companies that host GPUs, seeing that as a more effective and um, cost-effective means of getting more GPUs. So, for instance, there are companies that were trying to buy Lambda very recently just to get more GPUs. This is I, I would say this is the creme de la creme, because all of the chips you're not getting in any of the 4000 series are going in here, because this is the same chip that's in the entire uh, RTX 6000 through 4000 lineup, uh, except it's binned and you have a few features paired off because this is meant to run in a data center and be abused for years at a time. The, the performance in terms of precision is about the same. You have a very kind of pedestrian count of tensor cores and RT cores, but really the, the sauce here comes out when you look at FP8 performance and FP16 performance. Again, these are only intended to be used uh, with the uh, Gen 4 PCIe lanes, they're not SXM4 capable. And again, the biggest play here is this is a card that has no outputs, right? So no, no physical connectors for, for monitors. And yet it can power four or 5K monitors. Prior, like the A100 and even some of the A40s, these did not have that capability. They were neutered entirely with that. They didn't have any uh, in-bank encoders or decoders. So it's curious to see NVIDIA focusing on having kind of an optimized data center option for cloud workloads that's not necessarily compute or in just inference or just training, but kind of a nice general um, cloud workflow and in a physical form factor that makes sense to have. That just makes sense to have in a server because uh, blower cards don't make any sense to have in servers. So. Some good news from NVIDIA, some bad news. I'm very curious to see what you guys think. Uh, are you going to line up to buy an RTX 5000 soon? Uh, keep an eye out because we're making a video about some very cool um, new form factors that um, PNY has released, uh, along with um, what I would hope are uh, newly compatible um, water blocks from EK. Of course, it took EK you know, two, three years to create 
this really incredibly awesome, sexy water blocks for RTX A5000, and hopefully we see a bump for those again. So as always, I hope you learned something. Please like and subscribe if you like our content, and we'll see you in the next video.